the man who sold a fake airport for $242 million. $242 million and a fake airport. Back in 1995, Nelson Sekiguchi from a Brazilian bank came across an investment opportunity that seemed too good to be true. Driven by the promise of money, Nelson went against his better judgment and shook hands on an airport project, a simple decision that would change the lives of hundreds of people and set up the stage for the third largest banking fraud in history. Welcome to Fortunepedia, where we deep dive into the extraordinary. Today, we'll be talking about the man who sold a fake airport for $242 million. Just how did he manage to pull it off? And did authorities ever manage to catch the mastermind behind one of the biggest heists in the history of the world? Chapter 1. Planning the Heist Growing up in poverty in Lagos, Nigeria, Emmanuel Nwude had only one goal, to overcome his circumstances and live a comfortable life. Surprisingly, he was naturally gifted and was able to grab a seat as the director of the Union Bank. However, despite achieving such status, Emmanuel was never able to free himself of the blind pursuit of money. He craved more riches, and as luck would have it, he hatched the perfect plan in 1991. Back then, Nigeria was undergoing a historical transformation as it sought to make Abuja its new capital. The government was fully focused on the economic development of the city. As Emmanuel observed the large-scale infrastructure projects being approved by the government, a light bulb switched on in his head. He assembled a team of five more individuals like him, with a strong background in banking who would take on fake identities of government officials. Their goal? Reach out to banks all over the world seeking investments for a world-class international airport. Each fax was made to look like it was sent by Touristia Williams, a high-ranking official working in the financial planning and budgeting department of the Nigerian Ministry of Aviation. The chances of their plan succeeding were slim, and for a while, it did seem like a shot in the dark as the team waited for responses. However, one fish in the sea took the bait. The fax found itself on the table of Nelson Sakaguchi from Noroest, a major bank in Brazil that had been looking for new investment projects, and Emmanuel's airport plan seemed like the perfect opportunity. Emmanuel and his team couldn't have been happier. The plan was finally in motion, and the next step was to arrange a meeting. Emmanuel scheduled a date with Nelson in the UK. On the day of the meeting, the team gave Nelson the full work by hiring a limo to pick him up from the airport and arranging a five-star hotel suite for his stay. To further add credibility to their project, Emmanuel took on the identity of Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Paul Ogwuma, whereas the rest of his team presented themselves as deputy governor, the director of aviation, and so on. They had even prepared detailed fake documents, leaving nothing to chance. And so, thanks to their meticulous planning and charisma, the team was able to convince Nelson that the project was real. And when it was time to seal the deal, they asked him for money even though the project was to begin in four to five years. This unnerved Nelson, who wasn't ready to cough up $242 million just yet. But Emmanuel knew how to trap his prey. He assured Nelson that if he couldn't pay, they couldn't always rely on other investors, which shook Nelson's resolve, as he didn't want to miss out on what seemed like a golden opportunity. Emmanuel even dangled a $10 million commission in front of Nelson, which sealed the deal. They shook hands, and just like that, Emmanuel and his team had succeeded. From 1995 to 1998, Nelson transferred a jaw-dropping sum of $242 million to Emmanuel, which would amount to $413 million in today's currency, allowing them to get away with the heist of the century. Though the huge amount should have alarmed authorities, Emmanuel and his team were able to get away by smartly funneling the money to different banks all over the world and investing in real estate. But with such a large sum of money stolen, Emmanuel and his team could only stay hidden for so long. They were eventually found out. But before we reveal their fate, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to our channel for more videos. Chapter 2. Catching the Criminals 
fast forward to 1998 and a man named Jamie Lopez at Noroest found himself in a pickle. The bank was being acquired by the largest bank in Spain for a mind-blowing sum of $500 million. It was an amazing deal, one that could turn around Noroest's fate, but there was one problem. A third of the bank's capital was nowhere to be found. After racking his brain for countless hours, Jamie took the issue to the board, who summoned Nelson. At first, Nelson played coy, refusing to comply. But when Jamie's patience ran dry, he grabbed Nelson by the collar and demanded answers. At this point, Nelson had no choice but to spill the truth. As you'd expect, the board members weren't happy about him going behind their banks and investing in an airport. They rang up the authorities to track the money, and that's when the full extent of the situation dawned upon them. There was no airport, no Emanuel, and no trace of the 242 million dollars. Nelson was jailed for money laundering, but for the authorities, finding Emmanuel and his team of culprits remained a top priority, the chances of which seemed slim with Nigerian banks refusing to cooperate with the investigation, thanks to the bribes Emmanuel had offered them over the years. But with the international banking community bringing down the hammer on them, Nigerian banks had no choice but to cooperate, revealing Emmanuel and his team's identities to the world. However, since Nigeria lacked adequate financial fraud laws at the time, the culprits continued to escape the hands of the law. It wasn't until 2003 when Nigeria established a financial crimes commission did authorities seriously pursue the case. Emmanuel and his team were eventually caught in 2004 after a year of tireless pursuit. Emmanuel was quickly taken to trial, but sentencing him proved to be yet another hurdle in an uphill climb to recover the money. He bribed officials and members of the jury, leaving the presiding judge no choice but to transfer the trial to another city. Here, Emmanuel failed to corrupt the jury, but that didn't stop him from trying to escape his fate. He arranged for a bomb warning to be sent to the courtroom during his trial, but that too didn't work. The trial proceeded and Nelson was called to the stand, who provided a detailed account of how Emmanuel and his impersonated government figures and tricked him into investing in their project. Nelson's testimony cracked open the case. In the end, Emmanuel agreed to return $120 million out of the two 242 he had stolen on top of a $10 million fine as all doors closed on him. He was also sentenced to 25 years in prison. Surprisingly, he was able to bribe his way out of jail in two years, only to end up back in a prison cell in 2016. Apparently, Emmanuel had landed himself in the middle of a land dispute in a neighboring town. He was responsible for sending over 200 men to attack members of the opposing party, which resulted in the murder of a security guard. And just like that, murder was also added to his rap sheet. Emmanuel is currently awaiting trial for his crimes, though knowing he's probably racking his brain for an escape plan. And that's the story of the man who sold a fake airport for $242 million. That said, Emmanuel is not the first criminal mastermind to give the authorities a run for their money. Back in 2023, a group of hackers had one of the biggest casino chains in the palm of their hands. The group hacked into MGM resort systems, causing the casino giant to lose millions of dollars in business every day. And it all came down to one phone call. Just how did the group manage to pull it off? And was the resort able to recover its losses? Click on the video on your screen right now to learn about the $100 million casino hack that left the FBI speechless.